How's that? Is that better? Might be okay. Okay. And you're recording it properly? I don't know if I'm recording it properly. But okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Kona uh, meeting for June 8th. Um, I don't see any city or county officials in the office, in the audience. Um, and uh, I'm going to go immediately to announcements. And Pat uh, is here from Venice to discuss an issue. Thank you, and um, thank you for hosting this tonight. I, I did kind of raise my hand about the county official because I am on the Charter Review Board. So I. But that's not why I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight to learn uh, from Mr. Ryan, and I'm especially concerned because I have a development going right across the street from me. I live in Venice on Border Road. That is what we call the gateway to the preserves. It doesn't, yes, now it's working. The gateway to the preserves, because if you Google how to get to Sleeping Turtles Creek or to the, the, um, the Carlton Preserves, every direction will say take Border Road. So we want that road to remain looking rural and have an inviting ride just that short distance to the preserves. But a developer wants to change the zoning right across the street from me. And he wants to make that property, which can now contain 30 homes, it's 151 acres, zoned one for five acres, like I am, but he wants to change it so that he can put 263 homes in a piece of property that is in the Mayaka floodplain and has wetlands. So he wants to cut down all the pine flatlands and he wants to put in 22 acres of lakes. And in addition, this is going to just be right next to Border Road. So it would lose the look and feel. And we have a hearing that is Wednesday, inviting all of you to come. It's at the Venice City Hall, all day Wednesday. We've already had one full day, and we're still gonna go for more. Start? Starts at nine o'clock, Venice City Hall on the island. We'd love to have you there. Thank you. Next, I'm going to have Jono come and talk to you. Okay. I've got two issues I wanted to bring up tonight. Uh, you may have seen one of the handouts over there. Um, the state of Florida DEP is interested in putting cattle in Mack River State Park. Um, I, I walked out there, I walked to the site, 95% of the site they want to put cattle on is native habitat, native range. 5% was once improved pasture, it's been abandoned for 17 years, it has oak trees that are big enough, I wouldn't want to cut them down. So it's a really crummy piece of property for cattle, there's no fencing, there are no water holes, there are no corrals, there are no loading facilities. Uh, it's just not a great place, and I've talked to two or three different local ranchers who say they would not bid on it. It's just not worth it. There are two problems. One is a naive person, someone that was in semiconductors in California who wants to become a cattle rancher could bid on it. And two, it's the beginning of a new initiative from the state of Florida to change the mission of our state parks. Our state parks right now are supposed to be for conservation and recreation, and the new that's emanating out of Tallahassee is that there to be multiple use facilities and anything that generates money should be considered. That includes timbering, cattle, well fields, cell phone towers, uh, harvesting cell phone berries, hunting, and anything else anybody can think of to make money from our parks. So this is not what they're for and we've got a, a campaign to, to try and challenge that. So if you pick up one of these flyers at the top in the script, 
we've started a online petition with change.org. If you go to change.org and type in uh, Mayaka cattle or Mayaka lease, our petition will come up. It just started today. The reason I want you to do that is that way we will have your email and when they schedule the hearing to change the management plan for Mayaka River State Park, we can notify you. Right now, no one knows when that meeting is going to take place. So if you'd like to be involved and know when that's going to take place, please sign the petition online. Um, that's a change.org. Change.org, right. Now, uh, I've got these Don't Mess With My Aka. These are multi-purpose bumper stickers. If you're concerned about development on the floodplain, uh, you can put one on your car. And if you're concerned about cattle in My Aka Park, you can put one in your car. The other issue I wanted to discuss with you tonight it has to do with a, a so-called Walton Ranch. It's a six square miles of land that was acquired by Sarasota County through our environmental lands program. Um, it, the total cost was $22 million. Half of that was from Sarasota County, and half was money we sent to Swift Mud that came back to Sarasota County. They had the dedication today. I was down there. They've got lots of plans for hiking trails, equestrian trails. Meanwhile, Sarasota County is considering giving a private group uh, near exclusive use of two sections of land. That's two square miles, one third of the property. And um, so you can do the math. We paid about seven million dollars for this, and we're going to—they're going to give this as a lease for no dollars to a private group, so they can hunt on the property. Hmm. So I personally, have a number of problems with this. I don't have a problem with hunting per se. I, I hunted as a youth. But if you read our, um, if you read the ordinance, anything that happens on these properties that require with this money should be ecologically benign, um, uh, resource-based, and non-consumptive. Uh, and so, they, and let me, how many of you feel like you have a personal interest in what happens on this piece of property? One, two, three, four. Okay. How many of you got invited to the stakeholders meeting that was held to discuss this? Okay, I didn't either. The county held a stakeholders meeting. It was all insiders, not a single environmentalist was invited. And let me just quote from the transcript. Um, CB, this is an environmentally sensitive land, so how does the language about being benign and non-consumptive use work with this? Robinson, if it's not possible because of that language, we need to know. And here's a county attorney response. There are several documents that need to be amended to make this happen, including the ordinance regarding environmental sensitive lands. I don't think it's a problem. This is why we need to know what your plans are in order to make this happen. So they're proposing to change the ordinance that citizens were relying on when they voted to tax themselves to buy this land. And my contention is if the county wants to pass an ordinance, and then if the commission wants to pass an ordinance and change it next year, they can do that, but when the citizens vote, and they're voting on a specific measure, then the county commission should respect that and not go twisting the dials on it. So this is an emerging issue. Um, it's been kept very quiet. It first came up in January, and the Environmental Sensitive Lands Oversight Committee just had a report on it last week. So, yes, Bill. Who are the private interests? The private interests are a group of uh, disabled veterans, so it makes it really to say that you oppose something that a group of disabled veterans want to do. It, the idea is they would have these two sections of land and people would go out with them and help them hunt on this property. Mm. But this group is not incorporated in the state of Florida yet uh, and they want a, a lease for two square miles of land for no dollars per year. So I don't care who it is. It could be the Coast Coast. Well, it's right or wrong. Yeah, it wrong. seems inappropriate. So. Um, so those are the issues, and um, just stay tuned, I guess. Another uh, question. Yes. When you, any time an ordinance is mentioned, ordinances which you've just pointed out can be changed at will. Right. What can't be changed at will are charter amendments. Is there any possibility of organizing a charter amendment that would uh, have to do with this situation. Well, so what's really interesting is the commission discussed this wording at a commission meeting. They discussed the idea that it was supposed to be non-consumptive. And one of the female commissioners said, I don't get it. We, we trap hogs and we burn on the property. Isn't that consumptive? How is 
burning the property different than shooting deer or turkeys. So I haven't had a chance to meet with it yet and say when you burn or when you trap hogs, that's a management activity. When you shoot something, that's a recreational activity. So the wording that's in the ordinance that speaks to being non-consumptive has to do with recreational use, not, not management. If it was applied to management, you couldn't put a fence post in the ground. So right, but as you say, DeMarsh's position was, oh, well, if the words are a problem, we'll change yeah, them. Yeah, it was Schneider. But, or, or whoever, assistant. Uh, but uh, if it were a charter amendment, their hands would be tied, so perhaps it's time to start thinking about right. that. The only reason I bring it up is they are willing to reinterpret the legislative history of what consumptive meant. And they would do that whether it was in the charter or whether it's in an ordinance. Well, so. not depends on what the charter said, yeah. amendment says. I've taken enough time now, so. said this sounds like a good idea staff go figure out either how to make it happen or if it's feasible and the way staff has been behaving is they're interpreting this as basically a direct order from the commission to make it happen so when the attorney you know there's two roles of attorneys in playing government one is to make sure elected officials are following the law and the other is to figure out a way for elected officials to get around the law and apparently what we're talking about here is going back and changing the law so they're compliant with it so it's very scary. The staff are all petrified. Nobody working for the county is willing to say that the member is not wearing any clothes. And very few people are willing to say something challenging the rights of disabled veterans to shoot things. So it's a. So who really wants this? They got the disabled veterans to come. Uh, I'm told it's a group of people that have historically been interested in hunting in the county on this land, and they would be the people that would be accompanying the veterans, so they would have an opportunity to be hunting on the property. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, John. I also want to announce Mr. That CCNA, the City of Sarasota Coalition of Neighborhood Associations, uh, will meet on July 18th at 9 a.m. for a focus group discussion with MPO staff about the MPO and how it functions uh, and an overview of the, M of the MPO. Everyone's welcome to attend that. Well, sir. Say what MPO the MPO is the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which uh, oversees the planning of roads and traffic management in the bi-county area of Manatee, Sarasota. Where is the meeting to be held? The meeting is going to be held at the Waldemere Fire Station, just off of uh, Route 41 in, in Sarasota, and that's 9 a.m. July 18th. It's not their regular meeting day. Are there any other announcements from mem members? Okay. Um, turning community-based watershed management into beneficial use instead of shunting it to the bay, where in fact it wreaks havoc on the marine environment, is the topic that John Ryan is going to start off here tonight. Uh, he is the environmental manager with the county storm, stormwater environmental utility of the public utilities department. 
Um, he leads the county focus on stormwater's relationship to natural systems and water quality, as well as naturalizing waterways. And the most important thing is that he's building a community-based management system. Uh, and initially, the uh, area there are two priority areas of that watershed. Uh, and this is, he feels, will greatly influence the outcome as development of no, new techniques is sought. So he's really seeking community participation. And this is his kickoff uh, for these two uh, focuses on the two areas. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to the first slide. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, like uh, Kathy said, I'm the uh, environmental manager for the Stormwater Environmental Utility in Sarasota County. And I've had some really interesting experiences in the last couple of years working with community groups, and it, and it really changed the way I see things. It's been really invigorating. Um, so uh, feel free to interrupt. I'll try to have a lot of slides, but I'll skip a few and try to carry through. But if you find an area of interest, and if it's okay with you, we'll talk about those things. But the subject and also afterwards, uh, Steve Swan will talk about the potential uh, uses with this stormwater that could really work to our community's benefit. And talking to community groups, a lot of times I like to try to make it personal. What do you want? And this is really what I like to hear from people, is what do you want from your watersheds? And what do you want from your water bodies that are in your neighborhood? And what I find time and again is people talk about birds and fish, and in some cases, they just say life. We want to see life in this water body, but they always want clean water. And over time, the conversation has evolved to property value, things like that, a sense of place. People like to think they live in a special place. And really, this is a special place, and we all know it. Sometimes we have to be reminded. Um, it's nice if the water body is beautiful and not ugly. And uh, people gather there, they walk their dogs, they go for the evening walks, and they want to be able to do recreation in these locations. We have a lot of water here. You know, it's not like everywhere. We have, you're never far from water in Sarasota. Um, one of the things I'm in charge of is um, something called impaired waters and TMDLs, total maximum daily load. And it's a, it's a, a focus that came out of the Clean Water Act back in 1972. And uh, it's, based on pollution. And pollution levels that are exceeded are called impaired. So if you're over the standard, it's impaired water. Once the water has been impaired, you're supposed to get a TMDL, which is a numerical limitation. You have to crank the pollution back to this number. And so it's a regulatory thing. It's in a permit. It's in our stormwater discharge permit. So it's a regulatory thing. It's imperfect. It's certainly not a perfect regulatory scenario, but we try to do the best we can with it. What I like to tell people is that rather than talking about how many milligrams per liter of nitrogen is in a water body, we have to remember where we're trying to go. And where we're trying to go and what it says in law and what it says in common sense is we want water bodies that are useful to us. They should be suitable for recreational purposes. They shouldn't be so dirty that you can't use them. Full aquatic life is language from the rules, and it means that fish or crabs or other things can live their full life. They can reproduce, their offspring grow up, the whole thing, they get a full life. Um, some of the uses are potable, some water bodies are designated for potable use, and um, the fish and shellfish in those water bodies should be edible. If it's not, we haven't gotten to where we're supposed to be, which is common sense, but we tend to forget it. People say, oh, we'll never eat the shellfish here, and I think, why are we giving up? Aren't we supposed to keep striving for that? Isn't that where we're going? Um, this is a map of impaired TMDL water bodies in Sarasota County, and we have a lot of them. Um, again, it's an imperfect process. I don't think that the Mayaka River is terribly polluted, but you know, you work with these uh, programs and try to make sense of it. Can you tell us what we're looking at? Like, can you show us? Okay, this is the outline of Sarasota County. So then these are pieces of watersheds, like Cow Pen Slough Watershed, I think. Green. The green, all the green stuff is either impaired or has a TMDL. Is there any that's not impaired? Yeah, the yellow. But it's not right. But it's that's not why we water. have to manage it. And, and some of these will go away over time, I think. But the yellow part isn't water. 
No, it's the like creek systems that go through it. This happens to be Sarasota Bay, but the water, like in Philippi Creek, Power Creek, Philippi South Creek. Creek shows up at the meeting is black. Right, and this is exactly what I was hoping to say: is this stuff matters? This is a weird regulatory scenario that we work with, but we don't want to get married to. There, I'm trying to spare you the weirdness of it. The green is water. It's the watershed. Watershed. Yeah. So what we have to we're required to pick priority water bodies or watersheds um, and creeks. And so out of the 16 TMDL water bodies we have, we chose two. We had to do one for bacteria and one for something that wasn't bacteria. So Philippi Creek and Alligator Creek in Venice were the two that we chose. And uh, the, this is the TMDL process. And it requires us, it's a mandate to reduce pollutants. So what we have to do, it's a multi-step process, and we evaluate the projects we've done to reduce pollution, we look at data, because we sample these water bodies, um, and we work with stakeholders. That's the part that's been really eye-opener for me. And what I find is when you talk to people and they're common sense, they tell you common sense things, and that makes a sensible path forward. Um, like I said, the regulatory thing is imperfect, we want to have useful outcomes. One of the things that's interesting about Philippi Creek is we dug an extensive canal system, just like people all over the country and all over Florida. So we have a, what used to be a lot of wetlands is now a canal system. And uh, just recently we partnered with the Sarasota Bay Estuary Program and Boat Marine Laboratory, and they were going to do this week, in fact, we're going on our first field trip, and they're going to sample the fish populations in the creeks and the canals. And that evolved out of this process of how are we even supposed to manage those things? And they freely admit, you know, there's snook in the celery fields. It's fish go all over the place, but they don't really know how canal systems work. So it's an exploratory thing that the uh, Bay Program is paying for. Alligator Creek Watershed is the red outline. This is down in south of the city of Venice just a little bit. This is where Alligator Creek goes into Lemon Bay. And this is a map of homeowners associations that I have uh, a map for. And I've worked with South Venice Civic Association a lot, and I'll talk about them quite a bit. And also Venice Gardens is up there in the top left. Um, what's neat about Alligator Creek is there are a lot of parks and preserves along the creek path. So that may present opportunities depending upon what the community says they really want. So here are the, some of the fundamentals of watershed management from my perspective. One is that estuaries are just teeming with life. That is the natural course of things. That the, where the land and the fresh water meets the salt water is a very abundant place. By comparison, the open ocean is a desert. There are fish out there, and there are big fish, but they're few and far between. Where in a bay or in a tidal creek, there's just